scattering mechanisms can be explained with three primary, primary reactions or interactions rather between the radar, signal and the surface. So we have talked about surface scattering which causes specular reflection. That is one already. So we distinguish bit if we, when we have surface scattering whether it is a specular reflection because it's a smooth surface or it is a rough surface and we have diffuse scattering. It's still what we call a single bounce. Radar wave hits the ground and is being returned backscattered or parts of it backscattered to the sensor. That's a single bounce. Well, now imagine we have a house, we have a building, we have a smooth surface, some concrete surface, street, we have a house with a very smooth surface. Now what is happening? We have a specular reflection, so the incoming signal is being scattered specularly away and will hit the wall of this building. And what is happening in this place? It's again a specular reflection, so as if in a parallel ray the radar is being turned this around, backscattered with a very strong signal to the antenna. Why strong? If we have a smooth surface we have the energy being trans transmitted and forwarded almost in the same intensity as it has been emitted by the sensor. Now we have a strong signal hitting this house front so again a strong signal is coming back to the sensor. This is called double bounce, very easy, first bounce, second bounce. So why is, why is this important? This scattering mechanism is used to map urban areas, but it can also be used if you have flooded forests. Why that? Forests, like in the Amazon, the river level changes of up to 12 meters in height. Huge areas are flooded by water. So the first, the radar hits this, the, the water surface, but of course this means we need long wavelengths like L-band that penetrate the forest canopy, it hits the water surface it is specularly reflected to tree trunks. Now this would represent a tree trunk, not a house. A tree trunk is filled by water so and it has a relatively smooth surface. So all of these tree trunks that are standing in flooded water are causing double bounces and such very high reflections. So it is a very dominant phenomena that is being used for very different purposes like urban mapping or flooded forest mapping. Now let's talk about the third scatter mechanism which is called volume scattering. So volume scattering is caused by volumes and as a matter of fact these volumes could be a dry snow, meaning a snow with a relatively low water content. It could be sand layers in deserts also having very low water contents but it also could be a vegetation, a canopy cover. So I have a very simple representation here of a canopy. This could be a stalk of a plant or a stem of a tree. These would be two leaves representing all these many um, thousands, perhaps millions of leaves depending on the area lo you're looking at. Now each of these leaves is, with respect to the radar backscattering, a dish that is water-filled and because it is water-filled it reflects radar signals. Now imagine all of these leaves in a canopy being tilted in all kinds of geometrical orientations and each leaf causes each of the radar signals 
to scatter, to experience multiple scattering in the canopy. And so we cannot determine is this a single bounce, a double bounce, where we can even uh, describe what is happening to the polarizations. Now in volume scattering we experience depolarization in the purest form. And the same is happening whether you penetrate in a very arid soil or in a very dry snow cover. So we have a penetration into this volume and we have depolarization effects and we have as an effect, depending on the water content, more or less backscatter intensity. So this is a phenomena, volume scattering, where you use the cross polarization either using um, VH or HV because it doesn't matter. You're penetrating a volume, you have multiple depolarization effects and your cross polarized image will then tell you how wet the volume is and how large the volume is.